So, uh, to give a, a small update um, on uh, what uh, I've been doing uh, lately. Um, yesterday, um, I had some problems with my computer. It unexpectedly froze on me for seemingly no reason. It took um, it took like five or six reboots before I could get it to work again. So today, I ran a check disk, you know, on startup to make sure that everything was working properly and uh, it took several hours because I wanted to make sure that uh, you know it actually properly fixed everything so uh, that's why I'm, I'm streaming so late because um, uh, you know I had to wait so long just to be able to actually use the computer and thus it wasn't until too long ago that I was actually able to prepare for my stream so yeah that's why I'm streaming so late tonight but uh, I'm committed to making sure that Marvel Mondays happens every Monday, which is why, despite how late it is, I am streaming right now. So yeah, that that's basically what's been going on with me uh, in the last few days. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not I'm not sure what you mean by that. Uh, but, uh, so like um like I was saying um. So yeah, about the latest episode of WandaVision, uh, I, I kind of don't want to repeat everything that I just said um, again. So just to give the long and short of it, the latest episode was basically just one long action sequence, so there's not really much to speculate on except towards the ending. I'm not really going to be going over you know, the story of this episode in detail like I did with the, the previous episodes. I'm just going to be commenting on specific things that happened. Um, so, uh, with that being said, um, the episode starts the same way that, uh, the last one ended with, uh, Agatha holding Wanda's kids hostage in the streets, and, uh, Wanda tries to save her kids, she, she shoots Agatha with an energy blast, and when Wanda, when Wanda shoots Agatha with her magic, she says that she takes power from the undeserving. Now, I'm not sure how accurate to the comics that is. It could be just a new thing that um, they uh, are introducing to the MCU version of Agatha. Um, because as far as I know, in the comics, Agatha is just, you know, she was originally introduced as the babysitter for Franklin Richards. And then um, ended up being Wanda's uh, mentor, you know, to teach her how to use her powers and such, you know, in the comics. So... Um, this whole thing about being able to absorb magic and take it from the undeserving or whatever, um, it's not something that I, I know as being from the comics, so it could be a new thing that they're introducing for the MCU version of, of Agatha. Now, uh, as we saw it, at the end of the previous episode, um, Hayward's plan all along was to actually bring back Vision, um, and when he managed to get a sample of Wanda's magic from the drone encounter in a previous episode, he was able to restore Vision's body um, because it was originally believed to have been destroyed after Thanos killed Vision in Infinity War. Excuse me. Now, this is the part where White Vision shows up, and um, some people might, might question what, why Wanda believes that this is her vision, like the one that she created. Um, I think it makes sense for her to uh, think that it's her vision because the last time that she saw him was before she expanded the Hex to save him, right? Uh, vision started to fall apart because he tried to leave the Hex, so she expanded it and, um, you know, for all she know, you know, saving Vision caused him to turn white, so, again, it... There's no way of her to know what, what the effects of expanding the Hex to, to, to save Vision could have been on Vision. So I think it's reasonable for her to think that uh, that, that White Vision was potentially her Vision, you know? So uh, there, there's a, also a, another revelation that, that might come across as a disappointment to a lot of people. I, I'm sure it was. Um, so... What we learned in this episode is that um, Quicksilver uh, wasn't actually Quicksilver, neither from the MCU nor the, the Foxman universe. He was instead just uh, another rescue resident who, I assume, it's... Uh... Oh, no, no problem. 
Uh, I appreciate you stopping on by regardless, even if it was just for a few minutes. Uh, thanks for dropping by. So, um, so yeah, he's, he's just a uh, regular Westview resident who ended up being, um, well, I assume he was uh, mind-controlled by, by Wanda first when she initially created the Hex, but then Agatha um, used her mind control powers on him as well. Um, you know, I said in the previous episode that uh, I, I, I had thought that um, uh, this Quicksilver was a, a creation from Agatha, but that's not actually the case. Uh, what she said in the previous episode was a crystalline um, possession. Uh, that's the missing word that uh, I forgot from last week. So, um, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, apparently, and I'm not, I'm not sure how this works, uh, aside from Agatha being able to mind control uh, this person who posed as Quicksilver, um, apparently this mind control spell also gave this person Quicksilver's powers? I'm not really sure how that works, but I guess it just speaks to how strong Agatha's magic is if that's what it was able to do to him. So, um, we later see a scene of, um, uh, actually, let, let me just explain this real quick. So, uh, the crystalline possession that, that Agatha was talking about was the necklace that, you know, fake Pietro was wearing around his neck. Uh, Monica is able to, to see energy projections coming off the necklace, and that's how she was able to figure out that, um, you know, he was being possessed by it, and thus, you know, she takes it off and frees her, frees him from the mind control. So, um, so in the town square, um, we, we then see, you know, Wanda looking for Ag Agnes or Agatha, and, uh, you know, she hits her Agatha hits Wanda with the energy blast. Excuse me. And then they start to have a talk, you know. Agatha talks about how Wanda's the Scarlet Witch, how how she's meant to be, you know, the, the harbinger of destruction or whatever. Excuse me. She even says that she's more powerful than the Sorcerer Supreme, which, of course, is referring to Doctor Strange. So, um, you know, Wanda denies all of this. She, she thinks she's not the Scarlet Witch and yada, yada, yada. She, Agatha starts to free the people of Westview from Wanda's mind control. And uh, this leads to Wanda getting overwhelmed and inadvertently uh, choking the people of Westview with, with these magic colors that she didn't mean to, to put on them. But when she realizes what she done, she takes them off. And um, one of the things that these people say to her... Uh, when they're regaining control of their minds is that when they sleep, they, they have her nightmares. So all this time I've been wondering, you know, what are the in-universe ads that we've been seeing on the show? And, uh, you know, like, how do they work? And uh, now that that we've had we've uh, seen the whole series and after that specific line of dialogue, I'm thinking that the in-universe ads are the nightmares that people in Westview are having when they're asleep. So, I think that's pretty plausible, at, at the very least. So, you know, I'm, pr I'm pretty confident in saying that that's most likely what's, what's going on with the in-universe ads there. So, um, so yeah, um, so Wanda ends up needing to take down the Hex in order to free the people of Westview, but, um, what... <laughs> okay, so, this is where I get to explain, uh, how, how, how this all works. Basically, when, when Wanda starts to take down the Hex, um, you know, the town of Westview starts returning back to normal and, and, and everything, but Vision and, um, Wanda's kids start to disappear because of this. Now, people might get a little confused as to why it is that, that Westview can continue to exist when Wanda takes down the Hex, but, but not Vision and her kids. Now, the reason for that is because, you know, there's there's different kinds of, of, of magic that exists and different kinds of reality warping powers that exist and stuff. The reason why Westview can continue to exist is because Westview already existed when Wanda created this reality of hers. You know, she didn't create Westview, it already existed. She transformed it into, you know, 
this idealized version of it that Wanda wanted to live in, basically. She transformed Westview, she didn't create it. But Vision and Wanda's kids were created from her. So they literally cannot exist without Wanda's power, which is why, you know, if they exit the Hex or the Hex disappears, they disappear with it. So that's why, you know, Westview can and its people can continue to exist when the Hex goes away, but, but Vision and her kids cannot. So, you know, the, the, the fighting and, and the action, you know, goes on for some time, and uh, eventually it, it leads to a sword being able to get into the Hex, uh, because, you know, when Wanda tried to take it down, it obviously left openings inside of the Hex for, for, for sword to get in. Uh, and including Hayward himself, and uh, he actually tries to shoot Wanda's kids, which this guy's a monster, by the way. I mean, case D previous episodes weren't indication enough. <laughs> but, um, you know, when, 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 uh, when, when Hayward tries to shoot Wanda's kids, um, uh, Monica saves them by, by s stopping the bullets with her body. You know, she gets in front of them and Vision and uh, Hayward ends up shooting her, but the bullets go right through her and she's completely unharmed. And that's because um, Monica's body is basically pure energy now, you know. So the fact that she's able to stop the bullets with her body is teasing what kind of powers that she will later reveal herself to have. Because, you know, in the comics... Um, Monica Rambo's powers is that um, she's able to manipulate all different kinds of energy. And, um, you know, so, so that's why she was able to uh, stop the bullets from, from going through. Like, like she's done, you know, something similar in the comics where, where she gets shot at, but the bullets go right through her unharmed. So, yeah, uh, the, the fact that we, we saw this in, in action makes me very hyped for, uh, you know, future appearances of, of Monica Rambeau, and uh, I'm very excited and very much looking forward to uh, seeing what, what she'll be, she will be able to do uh, in the MCU. So, uh, while the two visions are, are fighting, Wanda's vision uses the Ship of Thesis paradox to get close to White Vision and restore his memories. Uh, this this is a part that I, I actually really like. Uh, I... I <laughs> It, it, there's there's a there's a puzzle in in The Witcher too where Geralt has to try to get past this uh, golem that's acting as a guardian for a laboratory that they're trying to get in, and he has to use uh, he has to introduce a paradox to the golem in order to uh, short circuit its programming and thus get inside the lab. So you know I have a soft spot for for things like this you know using paradoxes to confuse. Uh, computers and such in order to defeat them, you know. So they use the ship of thesis paradox, you know, which is, you know, if, if the ship is, uh, if, it, if it has its planks replaced to, in order to, you know, maintain it, you know, is it still the, the same ship as, you know, when it was docked or whatever. And uh, I actually had a, a, a similar paradox, uh, introduced to me, uh, you know, years ago, you know, where instead of a ship, it's a car, you know, if you take apart a car and replace all of its parts, is it still the same car? You know what I mean? So, so, Wanda's vision uses this paradox to get close to White Vision to, uh, restore White Vision's memories, because, um, you know, it is... White Vision is the original Vision, the quote-unquote real Vision. He just doesn't remember who he is because, you know, those memories have been suppressed. And uh, Wanda's Vision, you know, um, unsuppresses those memories <laughs> or releases them, I, I guess is the word to use there. So, um, so after that happens, White Vision concludes that he is the true Vision and uh, his programming directive is to destroy Vision. So if his programming directive is to destroy Vision and he concludes that he himself is the real Vision, then this should mean that 
what he should do is destroy himself, right? Well, that's not exactly the case. We, we see him fly off and we don't know what happens to him. Uh, for all we know, he is, you know, flying off to go destroy himself. But since we don't actually see him die, you know, we have to go off the rule that, that Marvel has basically set up for themselves, which is if we don't see the villain die, then they're basically being set up to return in a later film or whatever. So I'm pretty sure we're going to see White Vision again um, sooner or later. It's maybe even possible that we'll, we'll see um, White Vision in The Falcon and Winter Soldier, depending on when that show takes place. Um, it's probably not going to happen, though, uh, because uh, if I remember correctly, this show was supposed to come out before WandaVision originally, before everything got delayed. So if that's the case, then White Vision is probably not going to show up in, excuse me, Falcon and Winter Soldier. But definitely uh, in a later movie or TV series or maybe even a season two of WandaVision, if a season two is even made. So... Uh, yeah, not not really much else to talk about here. Just just more action and, and fighting and stuff. Um, I do love uh, the moment when when Wanda finally be becomes the Scarlet Witch. Uh, she's floating in the air, you know, fighting against Agnes. You know, she's shooting energy blasts at her, and some of them are hitting her, and some of them are missing her, and um, you know. You think it, it, it's it's kind of typical that, that some shots would hit and some shots would miss, but what what it's what it's later revealed is, um, you know, so Agne Agatha a appears to drain all of the energy from Wanda, uh, but then when she tries to use her powers, uh, she's unable to, and uh, we see the the life start to come back to Wanda and then we, we realize that um, all those shots that she missed were actually on purpose because what she was actually doing was casting rooms alongside on the walls of the hex and uh, as was explained in the previous episode only the witch who casted the runes can use her magic within that space so Wanda uses that to her advantage to take back all of her power and, and also fully embrace her role as the Scarlet Witch, which includes uh, her changing her appearance to a comic-accurate version of the Scarlet Witch's appearance that isn't just a crappy Halloween costume, and oh, it looks so good. It, it's like, it, it's such a brilliant, you know, translation from, from the comics to, to, to real life. It, 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 it's not goofy-looking. It, it's not... You know, it's it looks exactly how it should if you wanted to take someone with an appearance like that seriously in a realistic setting. It's they they really did a good job with, with the Scarlet Witch's uh, MCU design. I absolutely love it. It's great. So, uh, you know, after Agatha is defeated. Uh, you know, she basically tells Wanda that she has no idea what she's unleashed or, you know, what she's done and things like that. And, um, you know, Wanda basically decides to put Agatha under a mind control spell to make her harmless. Um, you know, giving her the role that Agatha chose for herself uh, back when, you know, in the early days, basically, when... when Wanda was more or less living the life that, that she wanted to live in, in the sitcom world and, and, and stuff like that, you know. So she transforms her into a nosy neighbor type character and uh, says that uh, if she needs Agatha's knowledge, you know, because she doesn't know what she's done, then she knows where to find her. So, again, they're, they're, they're basically setting up for Agatha to come back. Uh, maybe she'll show up in Doctor Strange 2. Maybe she won't. You know, who knows? Uh, she can basically come back at, at, at any time now. Well, not any time. It has to be relevant to the story, obviously, you know, so we're not 
exactly going to see Agatha in, in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, obviously. So, uh, you know, we'll see. That's actually, um, that's actually a, a, a really good theory. I, I also think that as well, um, b because of, of, of the, the post credit scene. Um, I'm, I'm going to get to that um, in just a second. Um, a couple of more things uh, happened before that. Um, you know, a after Wanda defeats Agatha, she decides to take down the Hex for good this time. And, um, you know, she walks home with her family, you know, kisses her kids goodnight and, you know, basically says goodbye to them. And she says goodbye to Vision. It's pretty sad. And then she leaves Westview to go live off on her own. <laughs> no, I, I don't think Deadpool's going to be in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. It's far too soon for that. I, I'm pretty sure they don't even have a, a release date for, for Deadpool 3 yet, which I think was confirmed to be in the MCU. I, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, uh, th th there's no way that they're going to have Deadpool in... in the, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. It's too early for X-Men and Fantastic Four characters to be introduced to the MCU yet. But they are working towards it, and I am going to bring that up later as well. Uh, because there there is uh, something else that, that did happen uh, in this series that, that hints towards possibly, you know, the X-Men uh, being introduced into the MCU. So, um... So, yeah. Uh, in the mid credit scene... Um, Oh yeah, uh, one more thing to bring up. Uh, when when you know Wanda and Vision are saying their goodbyes as the the hex fades from reality, um, we see Vision cry, which to me implies that Wanda's Vision is more human than the original Vision. So I don't know that maybe that's the case. I'm not sure what, what else that means, but I think it's meaningful. Yeah, yeah. So it is certainly it, it's going to be weird. It, it's um, it's it, it's going to be an adjustment that that we'll have to make. You know, when when the Marvel Studios version of, of X Men show up, but I, I, I'm sure you know people will warm warm up to it eventually. It's just going to take some some getting used to it is all. So. Um, in the mid credit scene, you know, uh, Agent Wu, you know, had got the FBI to, to, to show up to take care of Sword and, and, and Hayward and everything that, that, that he did and, and tried to do. And uh, we see an agent wanting to talk to Monica inside the theater. And it turns out it's actually a scroll who says that a friend of her mom's wanted to, they, they heard that she was grounded and, and wants to meet her. And she points up, indicating that she means in space. So no doubt that the friend that the scroll is referring to is Nick Fury, because, you know, Captain Marvel was the movie where Nick Fury and Monica's mom met. And uh, right now he's at the peak, which is the name of the space base that S.W.O.R.D. operates from. You know, we saw that in the post credit scene for Spider-Man Far From Home. So no doubt um, when Nick Fury meets Monica now that uh, he's going to find out about Monica's powers um, and uh, play a role in, in teaching her how to control them. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, I, I think what they're going to do with the Avengers is uh, they're going to form a, a, a new team and, and the Falcon and the Winter Soldier um, are going to be... A, a part of that. Um, I'm not sure how, how um, I'm not sure if Wanda is going to be part of that team necessarily because she's off doing her own thing now. Yeah, yeah, Fury is probably going to uh, make a, a, a new Avengers team com comprised of different members. I'm from the U.S. Um, I live in Pennsylvania. Uh, so, so that's what I think is going to go on with, with, with the the, the Avengers, because, you know, yo, thanks for the follow. Oh, you're from Argentina. Nice. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised um, I, I'm getting people from, from, from other countries watching my stream. You know, I guess this is a, 
a good time to, to stream for, for people from <laughs> not the U.S. So, um, now, now this is the, the, the big one. This is, uh, the, 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 the big moment. Um, um, the post credit scene, we, we see, um, Oh, I'm sure she will, uh, because the post credit scene, um, it shows Wanda living by herself in, in a cabin in the mountains, and uh, she's making her tea or whatever, and then we see an astral projection of herself studying the Darkhold. Uh, and as she's studying it, um, she hears her kids crying for help. Now, now this could mean... In my opinion, this could mean two things, because um, uh, so so comics explained is a, another is a YouTube channel that that you know discusses you know comic book related and, and you know other things like that, and, and of course they, they discuss the MCU on another channel called Pop Culture Explained. Um, now now he thinks that um all right all right let me let me actually set up the context for this first. Uh, there's a possibility that where Wanda is right now is um, Wondergore Mountain. And if it is Wondergore Mountain where she is, then this could be big because Wondergore Mountain is where Cthon wrote the Darkhold. And then years later, you know, a sorceress named Morgan Le Fay and her cult of Darkholders, they tried to summon Cthon and when it ended up happening is they, they, they couldn't control him, so they had to imprison him within Wondergore Mountain. So what, what the guy who runs the Comic Explain channel uh, thinks is that um, Wanda hearing her kids uh, as she's trying to study the Darkhold, he thinks that's Cthon messing with her because, uh, you know, in the comics, you know, Cthon is the, you know, demonic entity that, that, that tries to take over the world, you know, through Wanda by, by possessing her and, and such. So he thinks that, that this whole thing, you know, this post credit scene is setting up for Cthon to be introduced into the MCU. Now, I think it's possible that um, it's not necessarily Cthon, but it could still end up being Festo or Nightmare or even Dormammu, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if it does end up being Dormammu, because um, it would be easier to utilize a character that they already have um, than to uh, introduce a new one. But at the same time, I, I do think it would be better for them to, to introduce more demonic entities, you know, if, if for any reason, just to stay true to the comics. But uh, it's certainly within the realm of possibility that whether they introduce Cthon or Nightmare or Mephisto or, or simply reuse Dormammu, you know, whoever it ends up being, it's most likely going to be an amalgamation of all these different characters uh, mixed together as one. So if that's the case, then that's what I think is going to end up being what happens. Um, hang on, let me catch up with the chat here real quick. Um, yeah, uh, clearly uh, Wanda reading the Darkhold is uh, her trying to uh, learn how to control her newly found powers. Um, and uh, yeah, it's possible that um, she, she's uh, way in over her head with, um, you know, what, what she's going to end up learning that, that, that she could do. Um, I actually have a, a theory about... Um, what they're going to do with Captain Marvel. Um, excuse me. Because, um, to me, the mid credit scene where, where, they, where they basically said that um, Nick Fury wants to meet Monica, you know, now that she has her powers, I think what, what could possibly end up happening is for Captain Marvel 2, it's not going to be about Carol, but rather Monica. Excuse me. Because in the comics, uh, uh, Monica Rambo becomes the second Captain Marvel after the original one dies. Um, like, like, Carol Danvers did exist uh, at the time, but but she was known as Miss Marvel uh, when this happened. She, she didn't become Captain Marvel until after uh, Monica Rambeau became uh, Captain Marvel. So, you know, just going off of that, I have a feeling that uh, 
like like no doubt Monica is going to be in Captain Marvel two regardless. But um, I think that the movie is probably going to be focused on her rather than Carol, and uh, Carol is going to end up being a secondary character. So Captain Marvel two will probably be about Monica, and uh, Carol will be a secondary character. And uh, this won't be a continuation of her story, but there might be some connections to it or not, maybe. I don't know. Well, um, they, they didn't re rebuild Asgard exactly in, in the MCU, but rather they reestablished it on Earth, which is uh, actually what they did in, in the comics, you know, after Asgard, as, ah, blah, after Asgard got destroyed uh, in the comics. Uh, only instead of uh, rebuilding Asgard um, in, um, where was it, in, in Avengers Endgame? I, I think it was Norway, they said that they rebuilt Asgard. Uh, in, instead of doing it there, uh, in the comics, they, they did it in Oklahoma. <laughs> So, uh, you know, as, as they said in, in Thor Ragnarok, you know, Asgard's not a place, it's a people. So, technically, they already did uh, rebuild Asgard, but I get what you mean. Um, if anything, uh, I kind of want to see Surtur come back uh, because of uh, the role that he plays in the comics. And I do think we got a little bit too... We got too little of him in, in Thor Ragnarok, I feel. So I, I feel like he, he's someone who, who should definitely come back at, at, at some point. Uh, but obviously, you know, it would have to make sense narratively. But I think, you know, if if they really are, you know, setting up demonic entities like Kathan to, to come into the MCU, uh, then, then it's certainly a possibility for, for Sarah to come back and... Uh, if that happens, then that's hype as hell, and I, I would certainly be very much looking forward to that. Um, so, uh, getting back to what I was talking about um, with this post credit scene. Um, I, so, I explained um, what, what comics explain thinks is going on here. Um, what I think is going on here is that um, after Wanda took down the Hex, it's not that her... It's not that her reality and her kids and, and the vision that she created ceased to exist, but rather they somehow still exist inside of her. Like, she can basically just recreate them at any time, and they would have the exact same memories and personality and, and everything, you know, as if, you know, like, like she would... How, how do I explain? She wouldn't be... She, she'd be recreating them, but, but they would still be the same as they were uh, when, you know, she took down the Hex. Uh, hopefully I explained that in, in a way that's uh, easy to understand. Um, um, so, so, yeah, I, I'm thinking that um, it's not so much that, that her kids and, and Vision no longer exist, but, but rather they... They exist somewhere else, and, and you know, Wanda just has to re-manifest uh, their existence, you know, in, in physical form uh, somehow. So that's what I'm thinking. Uh, is uh, the, the 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 post-credit scene is, is hinting at? Hello, how are you? Um, so uh, let me see. I think that's. Yeah, um, so yeah, that's what I'm thinking is going on with, with, with the post credit scene there. Uh, obviously, we, we won't know, you know, the answers to any of this uh, for some time. Um, that this, I'm, I'm actually surprised. Um, when when I did episode 8, um, I, I thought that the way that the whole two visions thing was, was going to be resolved was that uh, Wanda would fuse her vision... Uh, with the vision that um, with white vision, and uh, that would allow Wanda's vision to become the real vision while the real vision still exists, you know. But that didn't end up happening. So now I have to uh, wonder uh, how Wanda's vision uh, will come back, as well as uh, 
what they will do with with what vision in the future and you know what narrative purpose he will serve um like because i really can't think of uh any time when white vision could come back uh you know and have it make sense in the story um it, it's certainly possible that uh for for a season two of wandavision that she'll try to create her reality again only this time do it right uh and uh also possibly um because she will have learned to to uh, control her powers that instead of uh creating a reality for herself within a small space she instead tries to create a full entire alternate universe and uh you know she'll end up trying to live there instead uh but um while while she uh may or may not have a a, a greater understanding of her powers and how to use them it, it might still have the, the same problems as the reality that she created uh, originally in this show and, and thus you know could be at risk of, of falling apart especially more easily since it's an entire universe and not just a small space of a universe excuse me but yeah uh, at, at this point basically anything can happen now like wanda's insanely powerful she can basically do anything so there's basically nothing off the table for what what could possibly happen now now that Wanda's uh, embraced her role as the Scarlet Witch and is learning how to use learning how to control her powers by uh, reading the Darkhold. Uh, so um, one last thing that I I wanted to di discuss because uh, some people might be disappointed that uh, Pietro ended up not being. Quicksilver either from the Fox Men universe or the MCU, but I still think that um, this show is possibly laying the groundwork for uh, the X-Men to be introduced into the MCU, because it's possible that, that Project Cataract is a precursor to Project Wide Awake in the MCU, and uh, Project Wide Awake is, uh, of course, how um, Sentinels came to be, uh, in the comics and so white vision could end up being you know the first in what will eventually become the series of robots that are known as sentinels in the mcu so uh i mean it might not happen that way um after all the, the show defied our expectations in, in a lot of ways you know like like there was no <laughs> surprise guest appearance from magneto and, and, and stuff like that you know and you know that that's that's understandable because you know like i said it, it's a bit too early for the x-men fantastic four to start being introduced into the mcu like like you know disney basically just bought fox you know around the time that the show started production so you know they had already planned the next five years in advance you know before the deal was made so there, there's no way they're going to start introducing these characters this early but I do think that they will, at the very least, start laying the groundwork for them to be introduced. And, uh, you know, White Vision could actually end up being, um, you know, a, a starting point, so to speak, uh, for, um, you know, mutants and sentinels and things like that to be introduced into the MCU. So uh, I'm pretty sure that, that that's all I had to say about um, this episode uh, tonight. Uh if there's nothing else that um, you guys want to discuss uh, before I get offline, because uh, like I said, it, it's very late for me. Um, you know, I didn't want to stream this late, but I, I more or less had no choice tonight. Um, if I had streamed earlier, I, I probably would, would, would play something to keep the stream going. But uh, if there's nothing else to talk about, then um, I, I'm pretty much just going to get offline and then, you know, get ready to uh, make this into a YouTube video to... Uh, post on the YouTube channel uh, tomorrow night. Uh, all right. So uh, if there's nothing left to discuss, then uh, I'm just going to end the stream then. Um, so yeah, um, <laughs> speaking of the YouTube, um, I uh, 
I am still working on those highlights from the last stream that I did. Um, it's taking a bit longer than it should really, but considering how it's over two and a half hours of footage that I need to go through, you know, to edit together and put inside of a video, it, it is going to take a while. But I assure you, once I'm done with those highlights and I, and I post them to YouTube, uh, that's when I'll do my next stream. So uh, hopefully um, you guys will, will enjoy that. That's something to look forward to. Um, in the meantime, I'm going, you know, Whenever I, I don't have anything ready to, to post on YouTube, I, I do have uh, filler videos that, that I can post, which is mostly uh, Shadowverse matches that, that I've recorded replays of. So, uh, you know, you guys could watch those while I try to finish my highlights. But yeah, um, it's going to be it for, for me for tonight. Um, so apparently that actually was the last episode of WandaVision, and there isn't going to be another one this week, uh, unless they actually do pull off a, a surprise, you know, epilogue episode, <laughs> yeah, that, that comes out of nowhere at the end of this week, but, uh, I doubt that's gonna happen, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure last week's episode was the last one, uh, so that means there'll be nothing new to, to watch this Friday, but I'm, I'm still going to continue to do Marvel Mondays, even on Mondays, where there's nothing new to talk about, you know, with regards to MCU stuff. So, um, you know, what I'll do, um, I have plans for that. Um, and, and, you know, we can still discuss MCU stuff regardless of whether or not, you know, uh, there's anything new to talk about anyway. So uh, if you want to drop by and discuss things while, while you watch me play games or whatever, then, you know, feel free to, to do that, you know, when I do Marvel Mondays uh, next week. But yeah, uh, that's going to be it for, for me for tonight. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, be safe, be smart, wear a mask, wash your hands, keep distance, Black Lives Matter. And uh, I'll see you all next week or, you know, whenever I stream again after I get those highlights done. So, yeah. Thank you all for watching. Uh, see you guys next time. Peace out. See ya. Bye.